Disclaimer. These videos are meant to be a brief overview of the subject. They are written to meet time constraints while still conveying factual historical information. My sources for each video are in the video summary below and can get you started on a more in-depth look at the subject. On a personal note, if there is a way to mispronounce the name, I will do it. It is a gift and I am sorry about it ahead of time. Welcome to Things You Should Know, Civil War Edition. Today we're going to talk about the Battle of Fort Anderson and the fight in Deep Gully, located in Craven County, North Carolina, on March 13th to the 15th, 1863. With his recent promotion, Confederate General James Longstreet took command of about 43,000 troops. It should be noted that this was his first independent command, and even per his own sources, he found it challenging. Under orders from Confederate President Jefferson Davis, Longstreet initiated Operation Tidewater. He did this by ordering Confederate Major General D.H. Hill with 12,000 troops to advance on the Union troops in New Bern. The two sides met on the Neuse River with a three-pronged attack. The first prong cut the Atlantic and North Carolina Railroad and communications south of New Bern. Utilizing this, Confederate Brigadier General Junius Daniels' brigade advanced forward and encountered Union troops 10 miles from New Bern on March 13th. Daniels pushed the Union troops back into a place called Deep Gully and took their position forcing the Union troops to retreat back into New Bern itself. Hill then directed Confederate Brigadier General James Pettigrew's brigade to take Fort Anderson. Pettigrew realized the only way to Fort Anderson was by a single flat and open causeway, exposing his men to fire. Instead of unleashing an assault, Pettigrew issued an order to Fort Anderson garrison to surrender. When they refused to surrender, he shelled them with artillery for two days. At the end of two days, several Union gunboats arrived and started moving up the river towards Hill's men. Hill didn't believe it was worth the effort to take the Fort Anderson, so the Confederates retreated. The total estimated losses were six Union soldiers, including two killed and four wounded, while the Confederates suffered 23 casualties including two soldiers killed and 21 wounded. Join us again next time on Things You Should Know, Civil War Edition. <laughs>